but it just isn't worth it in terms of your time. It's just not worth your time. Go and focus on something else, specifically you. You're the center of your universe. You're all that matters. Make the decision based on what's going to help you out and take it from there. Time and Mel of the Board A-hole here with my friends Joe the Fitness Mascot. His t-shirt came off. And Stanley the Gange Giraffe. Talking about t-shirts, you can get your own BLC top. Doesn't matter if you're big. Doesn't matter if you're little. You can be in the fitness club. It's all about your attitude towards it. You can get your Joe the Fitness Mascot t-shirt too. Because why the hell wouldn't we merchandise these things? Is there a Stanley the Gange Giraffe one? No, not yet. But I have got bored of specific fitness myths that continue to be thrown out there. So I thought today we could just sit down and we could share eight fitness piles of nonsense that of course we all want to believe. Because if they were true, they'd make getting in shape super easy but that's the point getting in shape is super hard so really when you break it right down it's a bunch of baloney stop doing it number eight is that protein and a bunch of sugary carbs after you work out is going to give you all the gains you need and make your workout super special now there's nothing wrong with doing this we said it time and time again the magical anabolic window if you want to do it absolutely sure go ahead but this is not a necessity when it comes to the gym and the myth that i want to dispel more than anything is that people have now decided if you don't do it your workout sucks but even worse if you do do it, you will be able to get double the gains that you would have done otherwise. Now, I swear a lot of people are just permeating this because they just want to eat a bunch of sugar after they work out. Every single day you're going, well, I want to be fit, but I don't want to, you know, how the hell can I put chocolate and stuff in my mouth or Haribo? Oh, I know I will come up with this absolutely ridiculous situation and it doesn't work. It is not true. Now, of course, if you want to get into glycogen and spiking this and spiking that, look, there are certain things that are going to make a bunch of sense, but ultimately it is not about what you're doing on a day basis. It's what about you're doing on a day two bay basis a week basis, a month basis, a year basis. Every single thing, that all builds up. And that builds to protein muscle synthesis. This is the same as V-Shred. When V-Shred goes, if you don't do it every two to three hours, when you get to three hours and one second, all of a sudden you're going to be in a catabolic state, which is absolutely ridiculous. Imagine you'd eating 10,000 calories in one meal. Think three hours later, all of a sudden your muscle's going to be like, oh, well, I've got no more nutrition to eat. And of course not, you're still going to be lying down in a food coma. So look, if you want to eat as soon as you're done working out, go ahead. If you want to stick some sweets in your mouth, go ahead. But is it a necessity? No. And can you take this too far? Yes. Number seven is that lifting heavy will turn you into Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's just not true. Please stop using it as an excuse not to lift heavy weights. As I've said time and time again, if all of a sudden you do become the size of a professional bodybuilder, you probably want to change careers. But also, it's not happening. That's the thing. It's not happening. You want to lift heavy in order to get strong, in order to grow muscles, but your muscles are not going to balloon out of your skin just because one day you did a 100 kilogram bench press. And why wouldn't you want to get stronger? If you start off doing a 20 gram kilogram bench press and then in six months to a year, whatever, you are doing 100 kilogram bench press, you should be over the moon. You should be writing letters to people. You should be taking a picture of yourself and sending it to the local paper because you, my friend, are an absolute success. And talking about success, we move on to number six, and that is that if you don't get DOMS, you have screwed up at the gym. DOM stands for delayed onset muscle soreness. And look, is it a really good barometer sometimes for knowing that you have broken the muscle down? Of course, because if you break anything down within yourself, it's going to hurt. So again, if you've done that bench press and you give your chest a bit of a push the next day, even the next 48 hours, you're like, oh my gosh, it hurts. This is great. And you'll be reaching for things and you can feel it. And sometimes it's really sore and you hate it. And sometimes it's sore enough to give you a metaphorical pat on the back. But if you never get DOMS and you never get delayed onset muscle soreness, this doesn't mean you haven't, haven't not broken the muscle down. It doesn't mean that your workout sucked. It just means that it didn't happen. That's as far as that can go. But again, I was on the internet, I was on websites, and I see people going, oh man, if you don't get DOMS, it means you absolutely suck and you should go put your head in the toilet. I'm like, you shouldn't say that to people. Because sometimes people will take words they see at face value and then believe if they don't get DOMS, they're not having a good workout, then they'll lose all their motivation and they'll stop going to the gym. There are a bunch of other markers you can use to see if you're getting in better shape, the best of which is the damn mirror. And we stick with this too with number five, which is that if you don't sweat, you also haven't had a successful workout, poppycock. Sweat is just a controlling of your temperature. When you get too warm, your body and brain goes, well, I'm feeling quite warm right now. How can I regulate this? Well, if I get rid of a bunch of water, I can bring back my temperature to where it needs to be. That is it. Now, it's awesome to sweat in the gym because again, it does make you feel like, oh man, I'm doing so great. But this ties into what I just said. There are more posts out there. <laughs> that guy didn't sweat. He's had a crappy workout. You're going to lose your motor and you're going to go to stop. There are some people out there that just don't have sweat glands. It's an illness. It's a medicinal thing you need to go and sort out. Do you think they can just never get in shape? No, that's absolutely stupid and it's not true. Number four is that your abs start to appear 
when you've done a lot of crunches. Now, the issue with this one is what do you mean by the word appear? This isn't a magic eye. It's not where's Waldo or where's Wally over here in the UK. It's not something you can just spy and then bada bing, bada boom, it's real. If you want your abs to show, you have to work and develop them like you would do any muscle group, but also you have to get your fat to a certain body fat level percentage. I'm not going to give you a number because it's going to be different for every single person, but you could literally do 1,000 sit-ups and 1,000 crunches every single day. And if you're eating pizza and you're eating burgers and you're eating nachos and you're eating ice cream, you ain't ever getting any abs appearing. It's the word that really threw me. Your abs will appear. What is this, a magic trick? No. Number three is that you never need to do cardio. You never need to do cardio because you're just interested in getting big and getting mass and getting stronger and stronger. And the cardio monster will come along and steal that from you should you ever even look at the treadmill in the wrong way. Do you want to know why you want to do cardio? Because it's good for your cardiovascular health. The clue is in the name. Without this, without your heart ticking over, you're not going to be able to go to the gym. You're not going to be able to lift weights. And when you do get older, and I'm sorry to say it's going to happen, it's a problem that is going to befall us all, you're not probably going to do it anymore because you didn't protect a Again, the most important muscle in your body, which is the heart. Do cardiovascular activity. It doesn't have to be anything intense if you are trying to put on size. You can go for a 20-minute walk every day. But even if you decided to do an hour walk every day, if your food is right and your nutrition is right and you're getting enough sustenance in you, your muscles are not going to all of a sudden fly off the handle. This is why you can look at super duper Olympian athletes who are doing all the cardio and they looked mega jacked. Even if they're on steroids or they're not on steroids, they're still working hard and they're still able to maintain that. And of course, it's always easier if you do do it with PEDs, but that is a completely different argument for a completely different day. You do need to be doing cardio, end of the story. Number two is that there is some magical secret to getting in shape that we just haven't found out yet. Now, I totally get this because it's the reason I still buy fitness magazine. Most of the time, because on the cover it says, oh my gosh, the secret to getting in the shape of your life. You're like, well, I'd like to get in the shape of my life. And you believe there's going to be some kind of supplement or some kind of food group that you haven't introduced to your plan. And as soon as you do, everything that's been going wrong will be going right. Well, I'm here to tell you that's absolutely not true. And when it comes down to any kind of fitness, bodybuilding, whatever, come up with the discipline that you want, it's always the simple stuff. It's always eating right. It's always training hard. It's always calories in, calories out. And it's always being as intense as you can be. There are other attributes that, of course, you can try and get the extra 1-2%. But ultimately, it's going to come down to your genetics and it's going to come down to your chemical makeup in terms of how far you can take it. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the secret is some people are just better than you. I don't mean on a personal level. I don't mean there are some people here and some people here. I'm just saying some people have really good genetics. Look at pro bodybuilders and some people don't. Look at people that just eat calories and calories and train and train and train and barely put on any muscle. Sometimes you just have to look at your dad or your mum and go, thanks a lot, parents. You screwed me over. And tying into all that, number one is that everybody who does look good is on steroids and there's no point getting into all of this because it's just a waste of time you don't know who actually is doing steroids and who isn't doing steroids and even if everybody who is doing steroids is in fantastic shape if you have decided not to do them which is a perfectly sensible thing to do you just need to focus on yourself and you just need to take your body to its natural limits and when you get there you just need to accept it but blaming every single error that you may be making on the fact that you're not taking peds just isn't conducive do anything. It's not. And ultimately, you don't know who's doing drugs and you don't know who is doing drugs. I think that was the same thing. But the point is, you just have no idea. All I can do is tell you that I don't do them. And then the coins people go, yes, you do. But it's based on absolutely nothing. It is a giant time sink that you could be spending on looking at your diet or looking at your plan or going through records that you should be keeping when it comes to fitness and saying, well, here I looked a little bit better. Or maybe I can tweak this here. or Maybe I can do this here. Maybe I need to push a bit harder. Maybe I need to change up my plan. Maybe I need to change up my diet. Maybe I need to get a personal trainer who can look at things completely objectively and help me there there are a ton of things you can do but if you are not in the shape you're in the answer 100% of the time is not steroids and you see it all the time if I did this I get here if I did that I'd be over there and I'm sure it will help I'm sure they're flipping awesome but it just isn't worth it in terms of your time it's just not worth your time go and focus on something else specifically you you're the center of your universe you're all that matters make the decision based on what's going to help you out and take it from there so there you go all of that is a pile of fitness nonsense never believe it please do leave a comment below because it helps the youtube algorithm i appreciate it like the video share that and subscribe to the bell ding ding so you know when other videos are going live there is another video on the screen please do give it a click come say hello on twitter at simon316 and instagram simon316 as well patreon.com forward slash simon316 if you want to help me out that way simon.bigcartel.com get your merchandise greg Busset's power 13 cookbook is out now link in the description below use code simon15 to get some money off but otherwise ignore all the gibberish that i've just told you in this video train hard Eat well, I'll see you soon.